Hello again. This is Ken Figueredo with Andreas Craft, and we are here to talk about how to manage groups in IoT systems. Hello, Ken, and it's good to be back for another of our video talks. Yes, indeed. So uh, let's get going. Um, if you can begin with a description of what you mean by groups. Here's a simplified picture of a street lighting system. You can see how an operator monitors and controls two sets of street lights. Here we have north and southbound road sections. We could have street lights in two neighborhoods or some other arrangement. Yes, I suppose uh, the operator could control each street light independently if they wanted to. Yes, that is correct. In practice, an operator would probably want to control groups of lights with a single on off command, for example, instead of sending commands to each light. Yes, yeah, so that makes for less work uh, at their end. Um, so how does that work when you tackle it using 1M2M? Here's a simplified picture of a street lighting system. You can see how an operator monitors and controls two sets of street lights. Here we have north and southbound road sections. We could have street lights in two neighborhoods or some other arrangement. One of the benefits of the group management function is to gather information and control IoT resources in definable groups. That avoids lots of interactions with each item, which, is sa which saves on time and mental energy. Yes, now I can see the value of that. So. How are you going to show us the group management function for today's talk? I have updated our illustration to show each light as an application entity using one M2M terminology. Each light has a unique identity from AE1 to AE6, as you can see. The next thing I want to point out is the one M2M service layer, which contains one M2M set of common service functions. In the illustrations, I've called out the group management common service function. Okay, that makes sense. Let's assume that we have already created the application AEs and the data structures for each of the street lights. We use now one M2M's group management common service function to create two group resources that refer to the street lights AEs for each group. Group A refers to AE1, AE2, and AE3 and controls the northbound road section. Group B refers to AE4, AE5, and AE6, and controls the southbound road section. From the control center, our operator can issue one command to switch on northbound lights. The group management common service function will take care of issuing commands to each light in group A. Yes, that seems to simplify life uh, for our operator. Should we switch to your notebook now to see how that works in code? Yes, now is a good time to do that. So I see with the notebooks, uh, we have to go through the startup uh, activities as in the past notebooks. Is that right? That is correct. Let's do that. I'm starting the CSE by opening this notebook here and running the cell. Just a few seconds and the CSE started. I'm now switching to the group notebook. And here we are. First, I run the initialization cell. That creates a couple of resources in our CSE for our demo here so that we don't have to recreate all the resources right now. Okay. The setup contains two uh, street light AEs, each containing one container to receive commands to switch on and off the lights. I'm now creating a group. As you can see, this is just the usual create request, but this time it contains a group. And as you can see here, it contains the resource IDs for our speed light containers. I'm running this command. 
And as usual, you receive the requests and the responses with the created group. And as you can see here in our resource tree, that the group has been created with the name Lights Group. Let's retrieve now all the container resources of the group. Here you can see just a normal retrieve command, but this time I'm targeting the lights group and a special virtual resource called fanout point, Bob. The request succeeds, and this time you get in the response all the containers that the group manages. Let's send a command via a content instance to the group, to all the group members. Here we have just a content instance that we've seen before, and the content is the command lights on. Again, it succeeds, and you receive two responses because we have two containers, the group management system of the CSE fans out the request to all the members, to all the con containers, creates the content instances underneath the containers, and returns the created responses. And as you can see, one single command, and we have two new content instances in our tree. So, uh, just to be clear, for this notebook example, you're just showing two street lights. Um, you can have many more. Yes, of course, you can have as many as you like. Okay, the last one is here to retrieve the latest content instances from all our containers. Again, the target is the light group, but the fanout point, and then we are adding the latest special also um, virtual resource so that we are asking each container to provide us with the latest content instance. We are running the cell, again one single command, and you receive in the response the latest version for the content instances, which is here lights on. So what you've done with the retrieve is to get the status of the street lights. I suppose that would be useful when a new operator takes over from an old operator and they want to see the current situation. Yes, exactly. That is, that is correct. And also for a management system, for example, to retrieve all the information, the latest information from all the members of a group. Okay. Thank you for those explanations, Andreas, and for taking us through the uh, code in the notebook. Uh, viewers can download a copy of the presentation, including notes on how to access the notebooks so that they can experiment with them themselves. Uh, I look forward to talking with you for the next topic. Thank you, Ken.